hello. <laughs> um, my plan is to, uh, is to doodle, but I can't see what I'm doing. So I'm sort of working that out. Thanks for your patience. I think I am actually broadcasting, right? So you can see my dog. I believe you can see my dog. Let me work this out a little bit better. So um, I have this drawing of a dog that I did actually from one of my photographs. It's really cool. So um, believe it or not, I'm going to try to see if I can find myself on this cast so that I can actually see what's going on. And uh, there it is live. Okay. So it looks kind of sideways or upside down, right? It looks kind of sideways or upside down, Let's right? Let's turn this down. All right, so, um, but anyway, yeah, it does look kind of weird. Let's see, how can I make this work? So I'm going to turn this and see if that'll, actually, that goes absolutely the wrong way, doesn't it? So we're making a couple changes here. Um, I like to draw. I do photography for a living. That's what I do. But I also uh, like to make art because I'm just sort of creative, naturally creative. That's how I am, right? All right, this is sort of wacky. But I hope it's working. So if it's not, uh, talk to me and tell me, okay, I got, oh, I got little hearts. Thank you for the hearts. Awesome. So, I mean, who doesn't like hearts, right? So I'm trying to make sure that we can make this thing. Ah, oh, there we go. So as you can see, I've got this drawing that I did of a dog um, from a photograph that I shot. I was in Montana. I was visiting my dad who used to live there in Montana. And there was this beautiful dog just sort of sitting with somebody on the street and I took a photograph of it and I've had this picture hanging around forever. I'm a cat person, but there was something about this dog. And I tell you what, he was my muse that day because I just took this pretty much one picture of him, but I have turned him into digital art. I have turned him into metal art. I love doodling on metal. I have turned him into this drawing. I have done all kinds of stuff with this one image. It's so interesting. And, uh, Here's another example for you. This is uh, one of the, a drawing that I did of the dog as well and where I actually doodled it all in. It's not completely done. But one of the things that I wanted to talk about today is how when we doodle that people think they can't do it or, oh no, you can doodle, I can't, but you really can. And all I did was, um, and I wanted to kind of demonstrate this, I thank you. Thank you, Chris Goslow, for saying nice. I appreciate that. So... All I did was I took the photograph and I broke it down into its very basic shapes, right? You can see his ears here and his eyes and his nose and the jowls and then the body. And so I just broke it down into some very simple shapes. And all I would have to do from here is I could still break it down into some more shapes, you know, just pieces. And it doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, doodling, one of the beautiful things about doodling is just all the great, uh, just mistakes that you can make. It doesn't have to be perfect. And you can see all I did was just draw a couple of lines um, to sort of create shapes for myself with, within which to draw. You know, they make jokes about the white canvas or even if you're a writer, they make jokes about how, you know, the blank page, staring at a blank page. My gosh, how many movies have you seen where somebody is staring at a blank page? You know, that's really what we're talking about. So what I'm doing here is I've taken a blank page, I've put some lines on it, and then I've broken it up into even smaller chunks of lines, and I'm just filling it in. I'm just filling in the blanks in these small areas. You could use dots, you can use circles, you can use lines. In fact, um, I have an idea for a coloring book that I want to create. It'll probably end up being an ebook. I think coloring books are amazing, and I know how much fun people have actually doing them. Thanks for the hearts out there. Um, if anybody has uh, questions or commentary, please, I would love to um, to hear from you. But I am uh, right now just demonstrating the simplicity of using very simple lines. And in this case, you can see it's like about as simple as it gets. These are just circles. And not only that, they're circles within circles. And I'm not even worried about them being regular sized. Frankly, I think not being regular sized makes it even more interesting, right? So I'm just filling it in. Lala loves you. Hi, Lala loves you. We are here doodling. And now I'm just going to do one quick little continuous line here. And I'm just going to let it go all the way to the end. I'm not worried about it being perfect because you know what? Nothing is perfect. We're hand drawing things. We're not machines. I'm just counting on my hands and my fingers and trying to draw as straight a line as I can. Not to mention the fact that kind of looks like my Sharpie. 
Oh, my, your Sharpay. Oh, nice. Beautiful Sharpie. That's the kind of pen I'm working with, Sharpie, see? <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, our animals are our best friends, aren't they? I mean, goodness gracious, they're just wonderful. So, look, I just did one long continuous line, right, where I just wound it up and down. And now I'm going to do something similar going the opposite direction. But this time, I'm just going to do straight lines. And that's all I'm doing, lines and circles, lines and circles, lines and circles in various directions, north, south, east, west, left, right, straight, wavy. It doesn't matter. It's all just whatever feels good, looks good, whatever you're in the mood for. And now we're just doing a half circle in kind of waves. I'm not worried about if it connects to the other side too much. It's just going to look really, really cool, right? And all I did was break down my shape into some smaller areas. So it just made it sort of more manageable for me to work in. And that is that. How awesome is that? So let's see, you know, you've got to stop and look a little bit and see what you think, if that looks good to you or not, if it needs a little more detail. I'm going to leave that area for now. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on this other ear. Yeah, I'm just, I'm going to make it crazy. and I'm going to work front ways a little bit. Um, I'm going to work on these eyes right now. Actually, I guess the brow of the eyes, and I'm going to create sort of a little, I don't know, you could almost call it a starburst. I'm just creating a shape in the shape of a starburst and then I'm going to put a V in the middle and let it come through. I'm going to do the same thing here on the opposite eye. I don't always do the same thing on both sides. I have to admit I'm a huge fan of asymmetry when it comes to doodling especially. I might be more symmetrical in my photography but uh, when it comes to doodling, I very much like things to not necessarily be the same. And you know what? Even though I use the same design, and you can see this, it doesn't matter. It's not the same. It's not going to be exactly the same anyway. So we are going to go ahead and give him a pupil over here. I think, oh, look at that. Look at his face just came to life, didn't it? This is really cool. Yeah, it's a creative doodle break in the day. And I don't know about you, and I bet a lot of you are like this, though. Um, I doodle when I'm on the phone. I doodle when I'm thinking about things. I doodle when I'm in my head, trying to come up with an idea, just sort of moving my hands. I find that it makes a huge difference for me. All right, so I'm just going to put some little dots around his eyes. And I feel like I need to have stars in this picture. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create some stars right here in the forehead area. I could actually break this down into some smaller shapes too. So let's do that. Let's break that down there. So we've sort of created a dividing line. I always doodle hearts and triangles. I don't know why. You know, it's so, I so relate to that. I doodle stars all the time and spirals. I got into a heart kick for a while. In fact, thanks for reminding me. Um, I hear some hearts. This one is inspired by you. Thank you very much. And I'm overlapping these hearts too, right? Why not? So we're going to do a little line of hearts. That's the beauty of doodling. It does not have to be pre-planned. In fact, that's the coolest part is just figuring out what it's going to look like moment by moment. Yeah, hearts. I think that looks really cool, doesn't it? So we could also do something around that, maybe even fill it in with a black space. You can see in this other drawing, which frankly, I have just a little bit left to do on it. I did actually uh, trade, created these lines and and uh, with circles and then I did fill in the black space. I'm not sure why I haven't quite finished it yet. I have two areas here, this area and this area, um, where I'm determining what I'm going to be putting into that, whether I'm going to fill this one in entirely with black, and we'll see, or whether I'm going to put design in, in here. But you know what? Sometimes white space is the design. And so uh, let's, let's consider that white space is the design. And even if I were to add something around these hearts, which I really like, by the way, so thanks for the inspiration. I'm just going to add some little dots, just these little tiny little dots. And you know, it's interesting how it totally fills up that space while still leaving it kind of blank and sweet at the same time. So I don't have to put too many in there. It's basically a suggestion of something there with barely something there. It's just really, really fun to do this. And uh, artistically quite satisfying. It's interesting, you know, I put my drawings up on Facebook every now and then, and there's, there's almost always somebody who wants to buy it, which I think is really cool. 
So thank you for all those people who have shown their interest in my art, which is, you know, and this is something I really do for myself. It's so different from what I do for the day to day. Love dots. They add texture. They sure do. Jay Sackett. That is a very familiar name. I wonder. Oh my gosh, it is. Hey, Jamie. How you doing? I'm so glad you're here. What a nice thing. Good to see you. So um, that's our little heart section. And we're going to fill in our, our star section just a little bit more. And we can do all sizes. Uh, and you know what? Stars are one of those things that they can come in every shape and size. Imagine. Of course, they want to buy it. Your work is delightful. Thank you so much. It's very sweet of you to say. I really appreciate that. Yeah, I love art. I love doodles. I love fine line design like this. I've been doing it since I was a kid, really. You know, it's amazing how our art evolves as we go too, right? So, ah, but stars is one of those things that I've drawn forever. We're going to make a little, we're going to make a little break here. I'm going to create a couple of a new, some new boundaries, so to speak. Does anybody have any other questions or comments? I'm so interested in talking to people. I think that is why I wanted to Periscope today. I just felt this really uh, powerful need to sort of connect outside with the world, even though I'm working from home today, but I'm taking this little Periscope break. But I love to hear from people and I love to get people's thoughts and ideas. Okay, so we're gonna put a few more stars in here. Let's uh, let's put some crescent moons in there as well, so we get a little little starry night quality. Just a few doesn't have to be a lot. Little crescent moons, why not? So you have a calming voice. Thank you so much. So glad you did. I'm enjoying this. Oh, thanks. I really appreciate both of it, both you guys. Um, okay, so you know what? I I don't know about you. I get. I, I mean, I almost hate to call them visions because, you know, it sounds so weird, but, but it's true. I actually get a vision in my head like, oh, I know I need to put a flower there. And all of a sudden I did actually see at the base of this dog's form in the drawing. By the way, I often like to box my drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and box this one. I never worry about the box being perfect. Perfection is highly overrated. So I just put the box around them. You can see here how I did that at the bottom as well. I wonder if I could turn him like this and then maybe you could see a little bit more of the drawing at one time. Um, so I had a vision, but I need to do this right side up, where I saw a flower right here symmetrically, even though I've been talking about asymmetry, but right here symmetrically in the middle of his chest. So I'm going to go ahead and draw this flower and draw these petals right in the middle of his chest. And I think flowers are for boys too. I'm sure this dog was a boy. At least it's always been a boy in my mind. I didn't really talk to him. I also always draw trees too, like vein trees. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Trees are awesome. In fact, I, one of the things that I love when I'm out and about taking pictures, I often love to photograph silhouettes of trees, which I think is a lot of what you're talking about. You reminded me when you said flower. Yeah. Trees are amazing. I shoot photographs of bark. I shoot photographs of tree silhouettes all the time and bushes. And I don't know, just nature, I guess, in general, because I'm always intending to use that imagery in my art. I do a lot of digital art based on my photography. And look at that. See, it's already getting really cool there. So let's see. All of a sudden, I decided that I needed to do this funny little thing in the center. So does a flower have to look like a flower? I mean, sort of, kind of. I mean, we know it's a flower, but do I have to put a stamen in there or a pistil or whatever it is just so it looks perfect? No. This is my imaginary flower. This is my imagination. And I'm just having a good time. So anybody else have any comments? What else do you guys do besides drawing? Does anybody else take pictures like I do? What do you guys do? Are you musically inclined? Where's your creativity? What kind of things do you do to create? You used to, huh? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, creativity comes in like every kind of form you can imagine, right? It comes in all kinds of forms. 
I'm going to go ahead and draw it in, in the face there and let the chest be the chest. And um, I'm going to start doing sort of a new, a new little area here. I admire my wife's art. <laughs> it's always nice when a husband admires their wife and vice versa. The wife admires the husband. You're a makeup artist. Oh my God. Some of the makeup that I see people do is so incredible. I love that. Love that. Do you do crazy stuff? Do you have fun with glitter and stuff like that? What kind of makeup do you do? I saw somebody do a video one time where they painted on, they painted their face so that it looked like an anime cartoon. It was amazing. Oh my gosh, that girl. And she did it for herself too. It was gorgeous. I did a post on Facebook saying, who wants to do this? I want to take pictures, but I didn't get a response and it's okay. It's okay. But I did think about that just the other day. So thanks for reminding me. I do love photographing people in the studio and then turning them into artwork. That's one of the things that I do. And it's one of the things that I actually do for a living. I get photo commissions and stuff. Right now I'm more special occasion makeup. But when it's when I first started, yeah, yeah, I totally know what you mean. When we first start and then we get the gigs where we have to do what other people want. But you know what? That's one of the reasons why. You're more playful with lines and colors. Yeah, I totally relate to that. When you're working for other people, you kind of have to do what it is they have in mind. But at the same time, you know, now and then, it's really fun to just sort of go outside of your, you know, your everyday zone, if you've got the time anyway. And sometimes just collaborating with somebody who wants to have fun just like you do is a good thing. I've worked with makeup artists like that. who They just want to do something crazy because they're trying to create something for their portfolio. And that's really cool because then I'll work with them. It's like, I want something for my portfolio too. And so we can do something that's sort of really way off the charts together. So that's super fun. What a great way to be creative with makeup, especially these days when there's so many different things that you can do. So much fun to be had. You don't have that free silent time. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I work out of my house, so I get my free silent time, which is kind of nice. All right, so that's looking pretty good. I like this flower. And what do I want to do? There's, this flower needs some delineation, so I'm just going to go ahead and put some black spots around the edges of these petals. Well, you know what? You could be creative in a Starbucks if you want to. In fact, in this area where I live, there's a really nice coffee shop. They have these big, giant tables. And... Uh, I certainly have done this uh, where I, I bring some pens and my drawing pad uh, and sometimes my iPad because I love to make art on my iPad and I'll just sit there and do it there. So what is it? Um, necessity is the mother of invention, right? So you figure out how to, how to make it work. Yeah, it is. Actually, just take yourself out somewhere. It could be a library. It could be just a table at a coffee shop, you know, where, I mean, there might be commotion in the background, but... Sometimes that commotion really, really adds to the energy in whatever it is that you're up to. Hey, this was fun. Got to go. Thank you. Go teach a piano lesson. Have fun, dude. Thank you so much for coming by and for the awesome comments. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. So I'm just keeping some spots here in the outer layer of these things and uh, my petals. And I'm so glad you guys are here with me. It's really fun. Actually, maybe this is sort of my own. I created my own little Starbucks experience right here. Oops, I think I messed that up a little bit. That's all right. Um, my own Starbucks experience right here in my house on my dining table. <laughs> so thank you. Um, he's been upside down this whole time, huh? Maybe I should turn him around. I don't know if that'll help. Yes. Oh, there we go. Oh, look at that. Okay, so I'm working upside down. What do I, what do I care? It's just line and design, right? You know? I don't even have to know, I could work upside down from any direction because honestly, I'm not sure that it matters when it comes to this kind of doodling. In fact, I'm going to do something different here. I'm going to move this a little bit differently. Create what I would call, I guess, tendrils, right? I'm going to create some tendrils coming out of here. Hello, Krista Crack. Krista Crack. 
Aristocrat. That's what it reminds me of. Are you an aristocrat? <laughs> That's funny. Hi. Great to see you. Hello. So we're just doodling here. We're just talking about, you know, having fun, creating from nothing, essentially, and uh, fearlessness. I guess really my message around creativity is always the same thing, fearlessness, as it does take a certain amount of fearlessness to... Um, to allow, allow yourself to be creative, right? Whoa. Well, thank you, Dan. That's awesome. I appreciate that comment. Thank you. Hashtag Deepak. Thank you. That's decent, as in really good. I really appreciate that. And you know, all I started with was just the outline of the dog. And then I've given myself small chunks in which to work to sort of, I think you can see the, the head a little bit. So, you know, in pieces, it's always easy, right? trying to sort of get this in here a little bit better. Now it's got to move back this way. You know, it's funny. I'm, I've actually got my iPhone up on top hanging over this. And then, um, I know, right. One should never lose our childlike quality. Right. Exactly. That, I think that to some degree, that is the key to creativity is just having fun, you know, allowing, allowing yourself to do stuff. Yeah. So that's what I did right here. So we're working on his nose. We're going to go ahead and do some, some drawing around here. I'm not worrying about it being perfect. It just doesn't matter if it's perfect or not. I'm just going to allow myself to do it. I'm sort of filling in the blanks. Oop, that was noisy. And then um, we're just having some fun. So let's see, what else can we do in here? Um, I did those stars and I like those stars. Maybe I'll do a different kind of star on the opposite side. We're going to do a loopy star. So we're going to stick with the star theme on the face and we're going to do a loopy star, which are really fun to do actually. I like those. So when it comes to doodles, are we worried about perfection? Absolutely not. Perfection is completely overrated. In fact, you know what the perfection lack of perfection in an art form is this is just my opinion but the hand of the artist i like to see the hand of the artist oh veins oh you know what you're right i should actually do some veins i just might do that um the hand of the artist like you can see where i actually drew um you know in albums when you're listening to people singing and you can hear their breath i love that to me hearing that breath in a song is the hand of the artist you know that's their actual breath. They didn't edit it out. It's still there. It sounds amazing. Anyway, so yeah, what did, what did we say? We were going to do some veins, right? I think veins is a good idea. So let's do some veins. These are going to be veins. We're not worried about which way they're going. They're all going whichever way they're going. Oh, you're going to get to hear some piano in the background. That's my husband playing. All right, so we're doing some veins. Look at that. Oh, that looks so cool. This is really, really getting fun now. So let's see, what can we do here? Oh, I just closed those up. That was interesting. I like it. Nice. Do you have any experience in publishing books? I do not have experience in publishing books, but the truth is that I actually do have two different books that I'm working on. One is about creativity and um, it's a, it's a, it's an actual like written book, you know, life lessons from a life of creativity, which has certainly been mine. Cause I've, I've been a professional photographer, uh, photojournalist, commercial photographer, portrait photographer, and digital artist for literally my entire career. That's what I've done, all those, all those things. Clearly the digital happened later, but I started out as a, uh, as a photojournalist. That was my first job, I was working with newspapers for a long time. Uh, during the you know, days of film and not digital, etc. But uh, I do want to publish a coloring book as well, and so I have been working on some of my drawings. We are continuing with veins here. I mean, I, look, my husband is awesome, yes, Yes, he is. He is awesome and awesomely talented, and I'm very lucky. I get to listen to this kind of stuff all day long. I mean, really, <laughs> it's fantastic. I'm glad you can hear that. It sort of adds a soundtrack to this, huh? So we're just going to keep on drawing our veins. I love this. 
You've been very inspirational with your ideas, so thank you. I would love to buy your coloring book. Thank you so much. Yeah, a free piano concert is right. Um, so if you, uh, what is it? Swipe right? Gosh, I haven't done this in the longest time. So swipe right, follow me, and I will announce to you when this thing is going to be happening because I'm actually in the progress of pulling my designs together and making decisions about uh, what it's going to be like. And it will be slightly different than your typical coloring books. I can promise you that because I have a, a little extra thing that I want to add to it around, of course, because this is my subject, I am the muse, around creativity and how to be creative even when you think you're not because you are. You're all creative. And I think if you joined in on this, you already know you're creative. So that's a good thing. But he's looking pretty good, huh? Oh, follow. Thank you. All right. So I think we're going to have to add in some spirals because spirals is my go-to thing. So I'm going to go ahead and add in some spirals. And um, I'm going to do some fill-in spirals. Sometimes I do them so they're kind of far apart, but not these. And I'm probably going to do them fairly um, consistent in size. Not exactly. I'm, like I, I said, I'm just not too worried about perfectionism. Nice. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Lala. Lala loves you. That is such a sweet name, by the way. Okay. So we're just kind of filling these in. And I'm not being too fussy because you know what? Once you get too fussy and you say, oh, that's not good enough, you just crumple it up and throw it away, right? But we're not doing that. We're just letting the mistakes live there because mistakes happen and mistakes bring the hand of the artist. Not like I want to, you know, put a big black slash across it. That's not what I'm talking about. But these little imperfections, like here's a little imperfection right here on the nose. I don't know if you can see it, but this line is not perfect. I didn't join it perfect, right? Do you think younger photographers have it easier with digital film, Photoshop, etc.? Um, well, you know what? Digital, digital did make it easier. And I was a professional photographer for 15 years uh, shooting film and making my own black and white prints before the digital thing happened. Um, so could I say that digital, what digital made easier for me was the fact that I could actually see my picture on the back of the camera. So I knew if I was at least in the ballpark for exposure right? I wasn't having, I was no longer having to rely on light meters as long as my camera was set up properly. And, and there are things that you can't just out of the box just say, oh, I look at the back of my camera and it looks good. I mean, you have to understand how to have your settings and how to have, you know, the brightness of your screen either dialed up or down to make sure that what you're seeing is going to relate essentially. And then of course, you know, then it gets to the computer. I mean, there's a lot of steps along the way that you actually have to really pay attention to in order for it to um, to actually make sense. Do I think they have it easier? Well, in that sense of being able to see you got the picture, yeah, I guess I could say that that has made it easier. But a good photograph is a good photograph. And a good photographer isn't necessarily just somebody with a camera. You have to actually pay attention to composition. And there is a lot of technical uh, stuff that you need. But if you just, all you have to really do is just get the technical down, figure out the technical, get it down, and then let your composition and your point of view, uh, be your guide from there, because then you're actually, you know, creating from the heart, you're creating from your own point of view and your vision, right? So really study the technical, pay attention to the technical. And once you have that down, you can do anything absolutely anything. So I'm going to go ahead here and fill in circles. So this, you know, it's interesting that I have two baseline drawings that are essentially exactly the same, and yet I'm going to make them look so radically different from each other. You're welcome. Thanks for asking. Um, I love the digital world. In fact, I couldn't wait to get out of the film world. I was probably uh, one of the first people that I know to get the low end digital camera. And I say that because at the time they were like $10,000 and, and you know, really, unless you were like making a hundred thousand dollars a year, nobody could afford that. Um, or you were getting sponsored. And so you got them, but I, you know, even for the newspaper I was working at at the time, I just bought a low end that I thought would work well for head headshots and product shots. And so I got that into the newspaper ASAP and it was great. You know, it was really great. But, uh, speaking of technical again, Everything that you do on a film camera is essentially the same stuff on a digital camera. The only difference is maybe, you know, your white balance and then having to know Photoshop, right? And I do believe Photoshop is the bomb 
In fact, um, it's one of my favorite things in the world. I teach Photoshop. I love Photoshop. I can't get enough of Photoshop. And so it's generally where I do almost all of my digital art. And the only reason that I say that is because I happen to do digital imagery using apps on my iPhone or on my iPad. I really love doing digital art on those using apps and there's some fantastic apps out there so it's a lot of fun all right so look we've actually come a long way on this drawing and uh, he's looking pretty fun isn't he <laughs> let's see if we can get him sort of sort of kind of there turn it that way i'm not sure how you guys are looking at this thing i know i've i've set myself up horizontal here um i'm not sure i meant to exactly but that's how it ended up so so there you go. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some lines into his jawline here. And let's see how that looks. Just add a little bit more drawing element to this. As you can see, I sort of wound it around so it wasn't just straight up and down. I gave it some movement of its own. And um, I think that this little, this little area where his tongue would be, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put some line in there as well. We're just going to give it a wavy line and we're going to let this line keep following it. So as you can see, all I did here was I just essentially chunked down the areas in which to draw. And that's one of the key elements to making it easy and um, not so intimidating. You know, that blank white page can be really intimidating. And I know we've got a long way to go on this guy, but I think I'm going to stop for now and I'm going to come back to him a little bit later. In fact, uh, you could pretty much count on me to keep coming back and doing more of these, uh, these drawings and talking about art and creativity. I call myself the muse and I'm a creativity mentor. I love talking about creativity and I believe that it's in all of us. And it's a conversation that's an important conversation to have. So I want to thank you guys for coming and I'll be back. So if you, if you haven't followed me yet and you want to see more, please do follow me. Oh, Jamie, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I'm, I hope you're following me because I would love to stay in touch. All right. So anyway, you guys have a wonderful day and I'll be back fairly frequently. Thank you. Thanks for visiting. Bye.